the podcast where we talk about different PB and J recipes. I'll go first. So I like a nice wheat bread that has a little bit of honey in it. Is this really with how a nice you're organic the peanut butter, and then fifty percent less sugar on the jelly? Not only is that healthier for you, it also tastes a little bit better because usually peanut butter is too sweet to begin with. But if you have the organic, it usually sets off and you know whatever. But then here's the thing: you deep fry it and then you add powdered sugar to it. Is this really how we're starting the podcast? I call it the Monte Porsky. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Is that seriously how we're starting the podcast? The Monte Porsco, because it's Monte Crisco, but it's wow. It's Monte Cristo, but I say Crisco because it's deep fried, and I think it's funny. It's a good pun. God. Sandwich pun. Oh my god! Welcome everybody to Post Grad Entertainment presents Post Grad Movies, the podcast where we start talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches deep fried with powdered no, sugar. No, no, no! This is the podcast where we talk about our obscure PB and J recipes. Okay. All right. Have you ever taken Oreos and then put PB and J between them and then eat that and then feel bad afterwards? I thought they already sold Oreos like that. No. Yeah, they do. Heck yeah, they, they do. do. Not sell, they do not sell Oreos that have peanut butter and jelly in the middle of two well, Oreos. Okay, okay, not peanut butter and jelly, but they have the, the, the Oreos with the peanut butter in the middle. They're the peanut butter Oreos. Yeah, they have those, but those are gross those are really gross and oh just adding jelly makes it better you have the cream man <laughs> you have cream in the middle and it makes it like 10 times better <laughs> all right all right okay all right whatever you say whatever you say crazy person have you ever taken two chicken breasts no and then put peanut butter and jelly in the middle and then throw it away <laughs> because that sounds disgusting <laughs> That's Welcome awful. to post grad PB and J's. All right, so <laughs> this week we are going back to our regular schedule, correct? We're going to add a new segment. It's boring. Go <sighs> so ordinary. Games, movies, and PB and J. Oh, delicious. <laughs> I'm on a diet. I've lost <laughs> five pounds. Have you gained any weight? No, I. Guy? No, I haven't. I'm gonna start it this week. I'm gonna start. Don't worry about it. You're gonna start what? When are you just gonna eat? You're gonna like go I'm to a buffet and just be like, bring it. <laughs> Give me the food. Great Wall number five. I'm going to go there every single day. Wait, what the hell's Great Wall number five? Those stupid freaking chains. The the Chinese chains that are just China buffets. Buffet? Uh, do you remember the one at Fort Collins that was like Super China Hut Buffet <laughs> number one Super Rocket Ship USA? Like the title was literally just small print on a sign and you walk in and you're like, I'm either going to die or, <laughs> or, not, or something that's still living <laughs> or... I mean, it was, it was deliciously cheap. It was like seven. It was like six dollars for a lunch buffet. Six dollars for then, literally everything you could eat, and it was enormous. Oh my god! I remember going with my fat ass roommates because we were all, <laughs> we're all we're, we're you know. You were all fat lards. Oh yeah, it was great. I mean, D met he he was a skinny, but he liked to eat. So <laughs> he was also extremely tall. That's true. There's nothing wrong with liking to eat. It's called foodies. I like to eat. I don't. Yeah, I like to eat. Well, I know you do. I was in Disney, and I ate a lot. Well, that's what you do in Disney. You eat overpriced food and are happy. Ugh, I've never had so many buffets in such a short amount of time. So that's what you did in this week that we were gone? Talk so yeah, essentially, I went to Disney. I walked around. I ate a ton of food. And then this week, I've been starving myself and exercising. <sighs> One, because I can't afford food. And two, it just won't be Disney buffet food. That's true. How how was Disney? Tell me about Disney. Disney was fun. Disney was great. Disney was Disney. It kind of sucks because I was just there like a year and a half ago. So it's kind of like, oh, I've lived this before. I don't think I'll go again for like another three or four years. Right. Because in that time span, I figure enough stuff will open that it's new again. And really, the first couple of days, I was just kind of like, Ugh, whatever. Which is really crappy because it's fucking Disney. But, um, but yeah, you know. When it's the most busy time of year when I went. Like, it was just at the end. It was, like, the cusp of it. So that mixed with I was just there. I don't know. Hollywood Studios is kind of weird in that regard because nothing really is new there. Right. Except for the light show, and that was awesome. Cause, so essentially this big family called the Osborne family, and not Ozzy Osborne's family, <laughs> um, donated a ton of Christmas lights to Disney. And they take Hollywood Studios, which has, like, this back lot, which looks like New York, right. kind of. And they decorate it with Christmas lights. And it's incredible. But um, it was weird because we walked in and there's Christmas music. There's fake snow falling, which is weird because it was also like 25 degrees. It was like 
one of the coldest days in Florida ever. Right. For this time of year. Yeah, polar vortex. Woo. Yeah. So um, you walk in, there's tons of lights. And then all of a sudden, loud music comes over the speakers and the drugs set in. <sighs> and then all the lights just go crazy. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Because there's this weird rendition of Jingle Bells was the show that was happening. And I was like freaking out. It really was. Like, if you took acid and then you've. And then went, had a PB&J. <laughs> And then you, you put acid in PB and J, and then you go and you do Christmas light watching, and then all of a sudden you imagine those Christmas lights coming to live and glowing, and you're freaking out. So that was basically what it was like. Yeah, I didn't take acid, but I mean, it felt like that. I've never had acid, but I imagine it feels crazy. Anyway, if it was really cool, by the third day at the parks, I was actually warming up to actually being at amusement parks because the first couple of days I was kind of cold on it. But then I went to Harry Potter World, and I got a wand. Here, let me show you my wand. Here's a nice box. Ooh. Look at that. This Ooh, is great radio. Vendors. But this is a special edition exclusive. It's called The Read. Nice. So they have a wand show yeah. at Universal. And essentially, it's just a ploy for you to buy a wand. A, a, uh, a ploy or a play? A ploy. Okay, gotcha. Like, you wait in line. You see this kind of cool show. And then they choose somebody, and they're like, here's your wand. If you want it, you have to pay for it. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's kind of fucked up. It's really cool, but my cousin was chosen, and she was part of the show, which is really cool. But I wanted a wand anyways, and the $30, which is actually cheaper. That's true. Yeah, than other places to buy wands, and it's a limited edition, and I'm an idiot, <laughs> so I bought a wand. You also got a lightsaber, didn't you? No, I didn't. Oh. No, their Star Wars merch is awful. It really? is so bad. Yeah, they really that's one area they can improve on because so the first day we were at Disney, it was like twenty five degrees again. Right. And I only brought shorts and a t shirt. Nice. You know, it's Florida. Right. So I would try to buy a hoodie, but I didn't want just the regular Disney hoodie. You wanted, wanted a Jedi. Star Wars hoodie. You wanted a yeah, Jedi man. Hoodie. I wanted a Jedi hoodie. And they did not have any. Literally the only Star Wars hoodie they had was one that says you judge me by my size, and I'm like, this is weird innuendo. It's like a line from Yoda. From yeah, well, yeah, I, I know, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I was like, this is terrible. They would sell this so the worst much. hoodie ever. They would sell so much if they just had the the cloaks, the Jedi cloaks. They sell full cloaks. Yeah, but I wasn't prepared to buy a full cloak for myself. I I already wore a Harry Potter robes to Universal. <laughs> I don't need to walk around Disney in Jedi robes. <laughs> you know? Anyway, so how was the rest of your week? It's good. I've been here. I've been catching up on work. Right. So Lady A visited, and how was that? Was that enjoyable? It yeah, it was fun. Uh, my landlord had a party. I've never seen so many like elderly gay men before. Really? Yeah, man. There's like 50 of them. That's awesome. It's crazy. They're so nice, and the food was good. Oh, awesome. Here. Anyway, yeah, um, oh, oh my god, the first night I was here, uh, I had a friend who asked me to host her cousin's 21st birthday. Uh-oh. And it was fine, because her friends, like, all ditched her, and I thought it'd be fun, and it was fun. They brought a lot of alcohol. I didn't really drink, um, uh, because of the diet, so I just watched them get the trashed. <laughs> they threw up. All, all night. Just all over the place. Yeah. That was awful. That was so bad. Because you, you, what, you had to clean up the entire area or what? I had, I had to help clean up. That's gross. Cleaning up vomit yeah, is man. gross. It wasn't that bad because one girl, by the time I already got down there, she already cleaned up most of the vomit. God, so I just had, God that is so gross. Fix it. But one girl locked herself in the bathroom for like four hours and I thought she was dying. So I had to check on her. <laughs> It was rough. It was a rough night. My landlord wanted to kick them out. Oh, my God. so. Well, which he didn't know. Well, yeah. 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 Holy. But, I mean, what else? I, like, what are, what are you going to do? You know, I, I said yes. I figured it wouldn't go that crazy, but it got that crazy. And then it did. Well, it actually wasn't that bad, but, man. Youngins, man. Youngins. Well, they were just freaking out. They are like, oh, my God, no. <laughs> and it was like everywhere and i'm like my parents are gonna kill me i'm like this this it, it happens like honestly it happens and i don't know if it's just because i'm i have like two to three years on these kids and i've lived through college also i'm just mature and i 
partied a little bit too much in undergrad. So I just know that nights like that happen. It's okay for it to happen. You cleaned it up. You took responsibility. You apologized. That's all you can do. So, also, I was a preschool teacher, and I've cleaned way worse. So that's true. You've cleaned vomit and poop in the same mixture. Oh, uh, I hate babies when they <laughs> vomit on you because their vomit is white, and it's just like oh, uh, it, just... it smells awful. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm back. <laughs> Like, remember that one time my cat, like, diarrhea like, had diarrhea, and I had to clean that up, and it's just me, like, in my underwear, cleaning it up, and he had to watch me do that. I'm about to vomit. So, that was in my nice, like, Easter clothes. So we're going, we're going to talk about this, because I, I was at his house. It was Thanksgiving. I was at his house, okay. and then all of a sudden, <laughs> his cat just freaking exploded out of both ends just everywhere <laughs> it was... uh, no it was in one nice pile but it was a nice pile in the corner of a room it was it was like it was almost like the cat became a kitty sprinkler and just like that entire area was just with stuff uh, and all of a sudden he's he, you know we're, we're all wearing nice clothing because we're going to do thanksgiving stuff and and he has to clean it up and he just takes his shirt off and his nice pants off and he's there in his underwear and he's like <laughs> he's annying the floor just cl- kind of like cleaning it and <sighs> and and he's just going like hur, hur, the entire time yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get, trying to suppress the gag reflex of how awful it smelled because it smelled awful oh and my that God. pile of shit was huge <laughs> i've never my cat it was a big cat you, you had a big it cat. was a very you large had a big cat, cat. <laughs> and he had very large diarrhea <laughs> it was that was that was great uh, i think the best part though was you going like uh, and then me just watching tv right next to you like ha ha you got a clean poo <laughs> uh man so anyway yeah so that happened that was whatever i went to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament and did, lost my ass did cynic win no ah uh. so we went to the tournament and something we never realized before was a lot of these people are admins for Dueling Network. Really? Regional champions. Like, these are big-time, big-dick players, you know? Right. Also, people that have way too much expendable cash, because, holy crap. I mean, literally, we sat down in this... We told you that one time we went to that the, the preview event, and the guy literally dropped, like, minimum a grand that day. No, I never heard of that one. Oh my god. So we went to the preview event for Shadows Vectors, which is the last pack. Right. There's a guy there, and he's trying to make a Noble Knight deck, which so happens every single card in the Noble Knight deck is hollow or higher. Really? So wow. really, really hard to get cards. And he traded Draco Sacks and Big Eyes, which both of the time were going for around 60 to $100. Yeah, those are, yeah. And he traded about 6 to 10 of those. Not to mention he bought at least... 15 to 20 packs of five which were going for 20 each not to mention how much he actually had to trade other people or paid other people for the rest of the cards he got the deck in one day but he had to drop at least a grand that is gross it is gross it was gross i felt bad and then last night you know people are playing decks that cost minimum 300 dollars, you know and cynic and i are playing decks that cost like i think my deck was about 50 yeah and it was just a fun deck, and it's it got hit pretty bad with the ban list. But um, well, yeah, because he started doing dragons. Shut up, <laughs> people are. We lost our audience. The point is, we're, we played people that are really, really good and have really, really good decks. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, at least you had fun, right, guys? I had fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun, and I fixed up my boxer deck. I think I traded a couple cards, and I got things I needed. So nice, not bad. Cool. So I'll probably be playing boxers this weekend at the new preview event. Oh, woo. Konami just is money whoring black holes at this point with Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so what did you do this past week? Oh man, well in the time that we've been gone, I went back to the forest. I went to another forest because I'm going to start doing some gathering of data in that other forest. And I also watched three or four movies. And... Yeah, I watched a lot of movies. I guess we should talk about movies. 
and and it. and finished the contest winning animation on yeah. our Congratulations channel. Congratulations to us and Woo. you. Woo. So anyone that wants to check out the animation that won us a, an awesome contest in on the tubes, on the YouTubes, you can go to our channel. It is the Constellar Rap. What's our channel? What's the link? YouTube.com slash user slash postgrad end. Or you, in the search bar, you can type in postgrad games and we will pop right up. We basically spam. We spam. If you type in postgrad games, we're spamming. It's It's all us. Is it really? Yeah. Did it finally change? Yeah, it is all us. Is so it, how about just post grad or is that movie? No, no, post grad is that is that movie, that one really Stupid crappy movie. movie. Yeah. Ugh. So yeah, if you want to find us, go and type in post grad games or post grad movies onto YouTube, and you will find our channel immediately, and you can check out our awesome Everything. animation and our awesome gaming stuff, which we are talking about the Yu Gi Oh stuff. But it's yeah. it's funny because the reactions to the Yu Gi Oh rap have been either universal acclaim or just hatred like vitriolic hatred and welcome to the internet it is it is just really funny because there's no you know midline it was just something that we did because we felt like doing something funny and hilarious and it's a i mean come on it's a hardcore rap about Yu-Gi-Oh cards what what about hardcore what what did you expect like I, I was like his voice sucks i'm like what that's not the point I thought this video was awful. I think it's just kind of funny because it's just one. Sometimes it's complete salt from people losing or, you know, whatever it may be. But it's the Internet. People are going to hate on things that they hate. But the thing is, we've attracted the attention of pretty big Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTubers, which is pretty awesome. That's and they've true. enjoyed it. Yeah. And I think their praise is worth a lot more than that 12-year-old dick face <laughs> that has shit for brains. No, you, you know, it was really and funny. I, no, they're probably very nice people. I was, they watched our video. So no, 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 no. I was, I was actually curious. So the, the, the kid that was like, I didn't like it. It was the video. This video sucked or something. Yeah. I went and I like clicked on his name. I'm like, I wonder who you are. And then, the, <laughs> and, the, and then the first thing that popped up was just comments on all the other, on a bunch of other videos and on a bunch of other channels. And all of the comments were him trolling them. And I'm like, this guy's a troll. Come on. It was just him going like, this is stupid. You suck. Blah, blah, blah. It was, yeah, it was, it was just awful. But it, it's it's really funny because I don't know we had a lot of fun and the video turned out really well and the rap was, and we won was the hilarious and we won the contest and it was awesome. I think it's weird that Kamar came to our defense and he was like, "Please be nice in the comment section." Like, I wanted to just go to Kamar and be like, "Don't worry about it." It's the freaking like, internet. Seriously, it's the internet and the fact for us even bad press is good press at this point. <laughs> um, but also it's okay. It's totally fine. People will just be like that. And that's something you have to accept, especially on YouTube, especially for something that won a contest for whatever. But overall we had praise. We had subscribers. It's still, we still have the contest winnings, whatever that may be. So. Right. Yeah. A plus. Yep. 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 So what yes, else? if you, movies. if you all want to check it out, you can go oh. ahead and look at it on YouTube. But anyway, moving on to movies. We are going to talk about first the we, we watched three movies together. I don't have Lone Survivor out here in Puerto Rico, so Cognitive Gamer went to see that movie. We didn't watch movies together. We watched movies separately. Exactly. But three movies exactly. we will talk about separately. Thank you. You are. This well, is why this is why I have you here to help me out. And <laughs> So the Cognitive Gamer will be talking about Lone Survivor first, and then I will be talking about the two movies that I went to see, which is About Time and Dallas Buyers Club. So with that, I suppose we can move into theaters. So Lone Survivor has an IMDb score of 7.8, a Rotten Tomatoes score of 72, with a 69 top critic score. And on Metacritic, it's got a 60, uh, 59%. It is directed by Peter Berg, who also directed Battleship and Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> it, two really good movies it, it stars mark Wahlberg, taylor kitsch emil hirsch and ben foster among others so give us your one sentence review for this movie america that is what i figured <laughs> yeah but honestly though i think I, I, an honest one sentence review would be intense war flick that is manipulative with your emotions so overall entertaining 
which is kind of shitty to say because saying something is entertaining when it's just a bunch of people dying is always a little depressing. But that being said, I wasn't bored for the two-hour runtime. So question, is it one of those movies where the seals are trying to survive or whatever and then each one gets picked off individually and each one is more and more patriotic and or sentimental until you get to the end uh i would the only thing i would change there is saying that it increases in patriotism it is just the same amount of patriotism and melodrama throughout the entire every single person that dies so someone gets shot and it's like oh my god do you remember that scene in uh, uh tropic thunder yeah yeah. Where Ben Stiller's like in the middle of the field and he like swings his arms out and there's the dramatic music and then he gets riddled with bullets. Yeah. Yeah, but that imagine that in not a funny context and you have a death scene <laughs> in that movie. Seriously, I was like, holy shit. It has like weird inspirational Christian rock music. What? Like instrumentals. Like, if you know, if you went to a mega church and they had a band there with an electric guitar. Right. And it sounds kind of like upbeat. Yeah. That's totally the soundtrack to this movie, which doesn't fit at all with its uh, manipulation of trying to make you feel really, really sad for these people who are dying. Right. So it had that music, which kind of made it be like, he's passing off the Jesus now as he gets riddled with bullets. (laughs) So I found the music to be, and then very manipulative with your emotions because you know, they're going to die as soon as they happen. So they're building it up to that. And it was very America. Like, it was so America. The whole thing, you know, <laughs> the first the first half an hour is essentially building character, quote unquote, which just means reasons why you would feel bad for them dying. So what you're saying is it's exactly like the beginning of the Expendables. This guy's going to go far. Look at him run up. He's so young. That kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but not in a sarcastic <laughs> tone. It was very serious. It was essentially this guy loves this woman very, very much. This person over here is getting married pretty soon. Look at these people that these people care for. They're having fun. They're regular people. Oh, shit. They got their head chopped off by a fucking machete. Like, seriously. And I think there was one review that said there's one courageous person and the movie's not about him. And it's about the Afghani person that took in one. That helped them. That helped one. Well, the lone survivor, which is Wahlberg. Right. That helped Wahlberg by taking him in, even though the Taliban was going to pretty much destroy the entire village. Right. If America didn't step in and then blow them up with Apache helicopters. Which did happen, by the way. <laughs> it's so stupid. I think it was a little bit dramatized. I mean, the fact that literally... I don't know. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but the amount of RPG rounds that was fired off at these four people <sighs> was an incredible amount of RPG rounds. <laughs> Basic, basically, just the amount of warfare was crazy and then America coming in and the amount of bum bum ba da bum 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 ba da bum bum kind of things was also insane. Yeah. But it was the first the first one was great because it started off with that and you're and you just think, Oh god, something terrible's gonna happen. And then guess what happened? Something terrible. They all fucking blew up. <laughs> you're like, Oh my god, they're saved. Yay and then every literally the happy Christian music comes in with an up-tempo major and you're like oh my god they're gonna be saved and you see like Wahlberg looking up in the sky like crying because he's about to get saved and it's super super cheesy and over the top and then the helicopter gets blown to shreds and you're it's so manipulative it it disgusts me (laughs) uh so you enjoyed the Uh, movie yeah it was all right (laughs) (laughs) like it wasn't like, those parts were so disgustingly bad, it was almost funny. So maybe I enjoyed the, mo- the, the movie for reasons other people did not enjoy the movie. But it was an enjoyable movie for the fact... It, it's an interesting story, did right? Did you laugh? Did you laugh? Oh, I had to keep it in. I had to keep it in. God forbid. <laughs> I laughed when a helicopter explodes full of U.S. soldiers, which is the worst time to laugh ever. But with the music... Like, I think I was just like, <laughs> but seriously, it's really, really sad. And it's, it's, it's an interesting story. And it kind of reminded me the movie compared itself to saving private Ryan in a trailer. And I was like, no, no, it's not that, but uh, <laughs> it's, I, I it's mean, not a it was horrifying. It was very graphic. It was very visceral and it definitely made you not want to be part of the army and definitely 
made you commend these people for what they're doing, which is fighting to the death, essentially. So it, it accomplished what it set out to do, which was support the troops. Right. I mean, for God's sake, it even had footage at the very beginning, like home movie footage of what do they call it? It's not frog training. It's called like wet days or wet training or something. Right. And essentially, so it starts off with like five, ten minutes of training, which essentially is you see soldiers get tied up and then thrown to the bottom of a pool and they have to hold their breath and they're almost dying. And then they get to get. Yeah. So intense training. Uh, which is kind of cool, but at the end of the movie, they show you the real troops that were actually in the situation and like home movies of each one that died. Again, very manipulative, but it was nice. It, it was essentially when you know those ribbons on the back of a car that say "support our troops." Right. It was a movie version of one of those. Right. Yeah. And it, and it and it accomplished what it set up to do. I was not expecting Saving Private Ryan, even if they called it that because it's not. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple scenes that were just like, oh, Jesus, this is too much almost. Right. And it was, like I said, it was very visceral. And there's one scene where a soldier is pretty much dead and he's against the tree and he's wheezing and he's coughing up blood. And you see somebody trying to shoot bullets at him, like pull, picking him off with like a handgun or something. And you see the bullets and they're like barely missing him. And everyone, you're like, oh, shit, this is intense. And then they actually show him getting shot in the head. And you're like, oh, shit. Nice. I was really surprised at how visceral it was. Right, right. Well, I mean, no, not nice. Well, I mean, well, I mean, it's trying to depict the the I suppose the realities of war to the extent that Saving Private Ryan did. So right, but that one was done in a more the tone was different. I suppose that's because it's Spielberg and not the guy who did Battleship and not the guy who did Battleship exactly. Starring Rihanna. Oh God, I hate Rihanna. Oh my God. Did you actually see Battleship? <laughs> yeah, I did. That's too bad. <laughs> uh, it was anyway, Lone it Survivor was better than I thought it was going to be. But anyway, because I yeah, thought it I was going to be garbage. I think it's kind of how I felt about Lone Survivor. It's like they're not good movies, but it's better than expected. So, do you think that it falls into the Metacritic score of fifty nine, Rotten Tomatoes of seventy two or sixty nine, IMDb of seven point eight? No, so, I don't agree with that one at all. <laughs> so, you're, just because it is manipulative, and I don't appreciate movies that are like that. Yeah. So like late is I knocked it for that because there's a scene where a little kid waddles out in the middle of the battlefield and you know he's gonna fucking die. And it's like, why are you setting us up for that? We just show him dead on the ground later. I don't know. <laughs> so you're saying it's it's more of a sixty percent, right? I think it's like sixty to seventy. All right. All right. Lower, would you like would you recommend people to go see it or save no, it for right Redbox? Red Box. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Redbox Netflix. Awesome. Amazon stream like it's probably worth buying on Amazon an early stream for like five bucks and then you get a couple people yeah right yeah. a couple Americans American yeah if you're American go see it because you'll love it <laughs> your movie and that's not an insult like some people actually are that patriotic and that's totally their lifestyle choice and that's great I say it like it's some kind I, of I mean, I mean they thing. totally have a parade, it's their lifestyle choice <laughs> it's their lifestyle choice to be American <laughs> And when I say American, I'm not saying American. Obviously, we are Americans, but Mer there's Americans, which are, are Americans. Gun toting, hooting, scooting, red necking, <laughs> Miller light drinking, cores crushing, nannying, Walmart shopping people, <laughs> which are great. I, my girlfriend's family's like that, and it's great. They're great people. All right, so I guess we're moving on. So tell me about the movies you saw. So the movies that I saw, I'm going to start off with... Should, okay, so should I start out with a happier or with a sadder movie? Let's go with sad and then we can end with happy. Okay, so I'm going to start off with Dallas Buyers Club then, which on... Is that the happy one? No, that's a sad one. Are so, you sure? Yes. So on IMDb, it's got an 8.1 rating. On Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 93% with a 100% top critic score. And on... Uh yeah, and on Metacritic, it's got an 84%. It is directed by Jean-Marc Vallier. It stars Matthew McConaughey, Jennifer Gardner, Jared Leto, Dennis O'Hare, Steve Zahn, and a bunch and a bunch of other people. Jean-Marc Vallier is known for The Young Victoria, among other, you know, smaller films. But basically, Dallas Buyers Club tells the story of a a very, very skinny Matthew McConaughey. Like, when I say very skinny, I mean about half as skinny as I am. 
That's really skinny. Like, divide me by half, and that's Matthew McConaughey. That's disgusting. And then you take Matthew McConaughey and divide him by half, and you get Jared Leto. Yeah, but he's always been that weirdly skinny. No, 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 no. This was insane. They were all so skinny. But anyway, it tells the story of Matthew McConaughey, who's this basically guy, this guy in Texas that, that goes to rodeos and rides bulls and whatnot. And he's very, very cowboy in the 1980s. And this is at, at about the start of the AIDS epidemic. And I was going to say, does he have AIDS? Yeah, well, well, yes. he, he, he loves rodeos, drinking, and sex. Tons and tons of unprotected sex, yeah, with women. And basically, he's, you know, it was in the beginning when... when it was in the be- it was in the beginning when they thought that that or not when they thought but when they stereotyped AIDS as the gay disease and and basically he had a problem where he basically passed out in his house and when they when he, when they took him to the hospital or whatnot he gets blood tests done and the people say that he has HIV the doctors say that he has HIV and he basically he doesn't believe him, and he says, are you, he says, they ask him, you know, have you ever, uh, he's also a drug addict, he uses a lot of drugs, and he says, have you, you know, have you engaged in no, any homosexual acts, have you had any sort of intravenous drug use, have you had unprotected sex, you know, stuff like that, and what he focuses on is, is gay, and he says, are you calling me a faggot, you know, and, and, the, and they go like, sir, you know, you gotta calm down, and he says, are you calling me, you know, are you calling me a faggot, you know, screw both of you, you know, blah, 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 and he just doesn't accept it. He, and he, he, just, he runs out. And then it's basically the story of how he comes to terms with, with the fact that he indeed has AIDS. And then it's, he basically meets Jared Leto, who is a, a gay man and a crossdresser. And of course, <laughs> of course he is. And uh, phenomenal. Jared Leto's acting, phew, phenomenal. But, but they both sort of team up and they create what's called a buyer's club. To get around federal regulation, so they go against. They team up. You sound like they're about to go fight crime, they... <laughs> vigilante style. So, so they they go basically against the FDA because uh, pharmaceutical companies are basically creating this drug called AZT. They're they're testing it out on patients and trying to go through drug trials. And AZT is causing a lot of bad, uh, crazy symptoms. You know, bad stuff, and it's killing people. And they they basically go to different places, pick up drugs that they can use to treat things, you know, vitamins, minerals, some other types of prescription drugs, uh, more, some synthetic, some of it more not synthetic. And, and basically they, they do what's called a buyer's club, which is a great way to get around regulations because the FDA says that you cannot sell prescriptions or vitamins or multivitamins or supplements or anything that is not approved by the FDA. You can't sell it. Okay. So the way that you do it is you pay $400 to get access to this club. And basically it's a big community of people and it's like a membership. Every month you pay $400 and you get the drugs for free. Cool. So the legislation and the way that the FDA works, they can't knock out the buyer's club because they're not selling the drugs. They're selling a membership. Right. So it's the equivalent of... It's like Netflix. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You pay you pay something a month, and then you get access to a bunch of movies. Yeah, exactly. So that's I like drugs. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's that's basically how it worked. And the movie was rough. The movie was really rough. It was a a solid solid drama that was sometimes really tough to sit through. But it was it was really funny. I don't know. It was it was a movie that was you know some sometimes it had a lot of dark comedy. Other times it was just the the people were just really charming. They they seem like normal people, but it really well written. Oh yeah, it was really well written. But it brought a lot of a lot of mixed feelings were evoked in me because it's it's a true story of w- of what happened in that time and about a real person. But the the problem was that they they really demonized the FDA, and I mean for good reason for good reason because that the the FDA has certain things that should be fixed, you know. But as a scientist, it it really sort of gave me mixed feelings. Because basically what he, what Matthew McConaughey was doing, what his character was doing, was he was giving these un, you know untested, not just un, you know not just FDA approved, but literally untested medicines and vitamins and supplements and stuff to to people. Obviously, they had they had no recourse, or they were part of an AZT study or something like that. 
but they, they had no other options. But there's inherent dangers in doing that type of stuff. And they, they did a good job of sort of putting that moralistic dilemma because you had two d different doctors. One of the doctors eventually moved to Matthew McConaughey's side and was helping him out to do this, this kind of stuff. But the other one was on the side, not on the side of the FDA, but on the side of testing. He said, AZT went through the tests and through the trials. And if it's approved, we got to use it for treatment. You know, I understand that these people have to get access to it. So that's good. And we got to treat them. But giving people other drugs that aren't tested and that we don't know what they do is wrong. And then there was another, the other doctor who said, I have some questions about the AZT study. And I think their methodology and their results aren't particularly conclusive. And maybe there's some stuff that we're not understanding. But I'm having mixed feelings about giving people the drugs. And I find myself on the camp of the doctor that eventually changed to Matthew McConaughey's side. But I don't think I would have gone to Matthew McConaughey's side. I would, I would have just stayed the course as that doctor because something that people don't really understand is the fact that all of these types of things, you know, the way that we know how things work is we got to go through clinical tests. We have to make, we have to do placebo, you know, double blind placebo studies. And we, we got to make sure that, you know, no one knows what's going on, that we are a hundred percent sure that this is going to work. Because we, we have the placebo effect and the nocebo effect, which affect people just because, you know, they're taking a freaking drug and they think that it's going to fix them. And, and it does. It might not have been the drug. You know, we have to make sure that we know what's going on. But the movie really demonized people that try and go through tests because it was it was a very strong movie in the sense that you got attached to these people's problems and to these people's life with AIDS. And it was very, very rough. You know, it was, it was very rough. And I suppose that's why, that's why it left me feeling like that. All right. So what's your one, uh, one sentence review and we can move on to the next movie. Okay. One sentence review is. I'll have to check out that movie. By the way. Yeah. Fantastic acting. It's directed really well. The script writing is great. These people seem like legitimate, legitimate people, legitimate characters, I would say. Not necessarily very real, so to speak maybe, but more the character that they're trying to put, per, portray is really honest. And also it's a very tough topic and it really treaded that line very well. And it just, it allowed you to make up your own mind about the type of stuff. It kind of pushed you towards like hate the FDA and hate clinical tests, do it on your own. But even though it did that, it still was a wonderful movie and I, I really enjoyed it. But again, it's a good, it's a drama. You got to be careful. Well, we're independent free thinkers. We can make our own decisions at the end of the movie. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, the FDA has some problems, but obviously you also don't want to be giving these drugs who God knows what will happen. I that That's what that's one of the things that I think you'll enjoy a lot, considering the fact that you've seen into the world of clinical stuff, you know. But as yeah. as as sci as a scientist myself, I was I was really at odds with the story. So I think you will be too. You should check out that movie. I will. What's the next movie you saw? What's the happy one? Okay, the next movie is called About Time, on IMDb. Is that that Justin Timberlake? No movie. No, that's In Time on IMDb. It's got a seven point nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got a sixty nine percent with a fifty five top critic score, and on Metacritic, it's got a fifty five percent. It is directed by Richard Curtis who also did Pirate Radio and Love Actually. And it stars Dummel Gleason, Rachel McAdams, Bill Nye, Lydia Wilson, Lindsay Duncan, and a whole heck of a lot of other people. So my one sentence review for this movie is a very honest, sort of normal, while at the same time being out of the ordinary love story. It is... Is there time travel? Yeah. Is there really time travel? Yeah. No, it's it's great. So it's like the lake house? No, I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. It's way better. It's way better. It's, I don't know, it's just oh, such a charming movie. Just from the beginning, you can see the, that character being so painstakingly normal, but not in the, not the depressing kind of normal. More like he's just an average guy kind of cool. thing. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he's a teensy bit awkward, but not that awkward. You know, he can still talk to girls and stuff like that. I get it. He's a he's a person. He's a human being. So let's get down to the time traveling. Um, <laughs> yeah. So basically, the story goes. Put letters in a mailbox. No, and then Keanu no, Reeves read it. No way. So <laughs> basically, when he turns twenty one, his dad invites him over for a talk, and it's his dad is Bill Nye. Not Bill Nye, the science guy. No, 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 no. 
And he tells him, I have a big secret that you can't tell anybody. And it's a big family secret, okay? I murdered four kids. No, no, no. He, he goes like, the males in, a, in this family, when we reach 21, we are able to... Werewolves. We are able to travel in time. And he says, fine. If I were to be able to hypothetically travel in time, how would I do that? And Bill Nye goes like, okay, so that's the easy part. You just, you go into a dark room or a dark place. You clench your fists really hard at the side of your body. You think, close your eyes and think about the moment that you want to travel back in time to, and you'll be there. And he basically starts traveling in time to try and fix certain things or to try and make things a little bit better for himself. So it's butterfly effect with a cute twist? No, I wouldn't call it butterfly effect. There's only a, a couple moments, like one or two moments where butterfly effect takes, you know, wh where it happens. But he basically tries to travel back in time to help himself get a girlfriend and stuff like that. And it's the story of him trying to find love with this girl while still being able to time travel and caring about the people around him. So it's, I don't know, it's, it genuinely surprised me because I thought it was just going to be another romantic comedy, you know? Where's the AIDS? Where's the murder? There's, there's well, soldiers. Where's the drama? There's a Where? lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot of drama. And the movie is beautifully filmed. It is, it is gorgeous. The movie is gorgeous. And I mean, you can see that from the, the poster of, for, for the movie. It, it's different than... It looks cliche. It, it, it's, see, the thing is, I would think so. But the problem, is, the problem with it saying that it's cliche is that to, for it to be cliche, they would have to be kissing. But yeah, I think, I think it's, a, it's a really great movie. And it, it does try and drive home a sort of seize the day kind of thing. You know, Carpe diem. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not about traveling in time necessarily. It's about living every moment, living every moment as not as as if it was your last, but live every moment as if there's no other time to live it but now. It's a different thought process, but it's the same basic idea. And I think that the movie, even though it felt a little bit long, because I watched Dallas Buyers Club and then right after it, I watched About Time. Why? Because I watched two movies. Why not? But At a movie theater? Yeah, one after Did the you other. sneak into the other one? No. Oh! But since I watched them one after the other, About Time felt a little bit long. But apart from that, I honestly don't have that many complaints. It dragged a tiny bit, very, very slightly in some parts. But it was definitely a good movie. And I don't think that it deserves a 69. I think it, it is at the very least like a 75%, definitely. It's just such a it's just such a charming movie. I don't know. You really end up enjoying the time that you are in the theater and smiling a lot during the movie apart from laughing because there's some parts that are genuinely funny. And then there's some parts that are that genuinely make you, I don't know, they hit you in the feels. Some things that do stuff like that. I don't know. I really enjoyed the movie and I would recommend it. M maybe not in the theaters because both of these movies, Dallas Buyers Club and About Time are basically out of theaters, but but I would recommend red box it. I would recommend red boxing it definitely and watching it. You can watch it with your significant other, but you don't have to. It's not one of those types of chick flicks. <laughs> you could just be sitting in a chair with your pants off. Yes, exactly. Eating Cheetos. That is my everyday. So you know. You like? Do you like Cheetos? I like Cheetos. I like. Cheetos. I miss Cheetos. All right. Anyway, I'm having a salad for lunch. I'm not looking for. So anyway, it sounds like a cool movie. I'll have yeah. to look at it. I do like that director. Yeah. So and love actually. And Pirate Radio were both great. And Love Actually was fantastic. I love Love Actually. But anyway. Love. I love Love Actually. Actually. Yeah. But anyway, we are moving on. And for the first time in like, what, three freaking weeks, we have our Netflix movie spotlight totally not sponsored by Netflix yet. I don't think it will be. <laughs> we haven't even tried to make. <laughs> and, and the movie that we were going to watch is called... It's Spaceballs. Is, no, is called... I watched Spaceballs. I know you did. But that's not the point. <laughs> the movie that we are that we watched this time around, we, American Psycho. We announced it over our over our Facebook page, which you should check that out. Too. Is Los Cronocrímenes, which is Time Crimes, a stupid name, a Spanish basically thriller, m murder, crime, time traveling sci fi movie. Spaceballs, the streaming movie. Wow. Can we talk about Spaceballs first before we get into time of select criminals? We can talk about Spaceballs afterwards. How's that? How? Fine. Talk about Spaceballs now. 
No, we can talk about it later. Fine. So, so Spaceballs the movie. So, Time Crimes on IMDb has a 7 point. No, no, no. Call it by its true name. Criminalis de Timo. Wow. So, Tiempo de Crime. I can, I can, I'll say the entire thing in Spanish then. So, Los Cronocrímenes tiene un 7.2 en IMDb, un 87 o 79% en Rotten Tomatoes y tiene 68% en Metacritic. Está dirigida por Nacho Vigalondo. También tiene a ah, Carra El Jade, El Jade, mm. Candela Fernández, Bárbara Goenga, Nacho Vigalondo. Y Nacho Vigalondo, que es el director, también dirigió una, una de las películas cortas en The ABCs of Death. Él dirigió A is for Apocalypse. Also the stupid one. The, the first one. Yeah, it was okay. Did, he, did, he, did the director, Hollis, do anything else? Basically, he's done a lot of short films, so, so n not not a lot. I think, I, th I think Time Crimes kind of felt like a short film that's been blown up. I'm kind of surprised by the. I mean, I, I think it deserves the eight and the seven point nine or whatever you said. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's got a, uh, it's got an eighty seven on Rotten Tomatoes and a seventy nine. There you piece. go. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny because the director is the lab guy. Really? Yeah, that's the director. He's young. I yeah. thought he was old. Yeah, he is. He's really young. But yeah. So, one sentence review, go. Underwhelming for the first hour, but the last half an hour is awesome. Okay. Or first 45, and then the last, yeah. So. Cynic agrees. I forced him to watch it with me. So, for me, I'm going to say a very sort of 80s style classic horror, a little bit of camp sprinkled about, and a genuinely interesting story. I, yeah, I, I, I think it got better because at first it's kind of cliche. Yeah, like, right. I I saw something in the past. Now let me fix it. Right. Yeah. So. And, you know, so but yeah. But then it got pretty pretty good because it, it had some twists at the end there. Yeah. So yeah, I I really I really enjoyed it. So let's start talking about it. If you haven't seen it, go. You can't watch it on Netflix because it's gone. So ha. And now. That was a really bad choice for us. <laughs> hey, you know that movie that we're gonna be talking about? And well, well, we we uh, we announced we can't watch it. We announced it on Facebook. It's okay. Oh, so all of you should everyone that is listening to us right now go to our Facebook page, facebookcom ent postgrad entertainment, and like our page. We're gonna say what movies we're gonna watch for the Netflix movie spotlight. You can watch them with us. And then we'll talk about them in the next podcast. How about this? If you really, really want to watch this, the first three people that tell us on our Facebook page that they want to see it, I will give them like a $3 credit on Amazon to rent it or something. Right. Yeah. That sounds like an idea. If you want to see this movie and you were not able to catch it in that time, we will give you some credit on Amazon for you to be able to watch it. If you have Amazon Prime, it is still available unlimited for free through Amazon Instant. However, if you don't have Prime, we will send you credit so that you can watch the movie. Just email us. Yeah. Uh, postgradentertainment at gmail.com. Yep. And give us your the email that you use for Amazon so that we can send the stuff over there. And we will. Yes. So let's start talking about the movie. Okay. Let's start talking about the plot holes. Why does he take her underwear? There's no point in that. Okay. No. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. I'm not going to talk about plot holes first because I want to highlight something that I feel so thankful for in this movie, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The binoculars had one circle. Oh my God. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you, you so mean? much. When he was looking through the binoculars, in, right. in every single stupid Hollywood movie, they put the two circles intersecting and that's not what you see through a binocular. You see one full circle, just like you don't see two circles when you're looking through your eyes. God, oh my god oh my god you want me to dive like, into how you see through your eyes because i have like hundreds of notes on that oh yeah no i'm 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 acutely aware of the <laughs> notes that you have but we're not going to get into that i'm Did just you know saying track, i'm just saying no we're done 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 so i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad that they used one circle for the binoculars and faded Good out job, the sides movie. thank you thank you movie watch it okay anyway so so now we can the talk. plot holes, because I really want to get into that with you. Okay. Especially. Yeah. Why does he take her underwear? Because she. There's no need for that. Because she wasn't wearing underwear. She was completely. Yeah, she, was. she wasn't complete. She was completely naked. Yeah, when he saw her, but there was no reason to be like, you know what? Fuck it, I'll just take her underwear too. 
she was completely naked when he saw her the first time. Yeah. Yeah, so he's trying to imitate everything exactly as he saw it. But why in the first place? So the very first Hector that ever went through the portal, which set off this chain of events, why did he take her underwear? Because that's fucking weird. Wait, wait, when when did he take her underwear? The first so there Hector? has to be the initial Wait, wait, wait. The, the first Hector that went through... He he just he took because oh, because he before s- the cycle began the cycle had to begin somewhere and that somewhere began with this one Hector who probably could have been the upteenth millionth Hector that we saw the journey of we don't know but that very first one that started off the cycle like why was he doing what he was doing there was okay so okay let me let me ex- another possibility we could also consider is that this is also like the one millionth person in this cycle and somehow there was a change within that link which then he was kind of just kind of crazy and did all this and then we're seeing that path like time travel is weird no 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 no. what what we're seeing in this movie is basically a time paradox well no i know what we're seeing but i'm saying hypothetically we could be seeing the time paradox played out for the millionth time well well yeah, yeah 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 but but the thing is because it's a by definition a paradox you can't go back and and say that there was a first or a beginning hector that took her panties you can't say that why there has to there has to be a hector no, that no, began no, the no, paradox no 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 there doesn't because you can have spontaneous creation within paradoxes at least w- when time travel like that is involved which is why it can never happen because you can All the articles you can that we read about spontaneous time travel no because it's 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 for example what happens if if all of a sudden Someone appears, right? If I appear to myself, this isn't Donnie Darko. Well, boy, just just listen. What happens if I appear to myself, and I give a pen to myself, and I say, "Here's this pen. In 20 years, you're gonna travel back in time and give it to yourself," and then I disappear, go forward in time, 20 years later, go back in time, give it to myself. Where did I get that pen? Where did that pen appear? Where I gave it to myself, but who gave it to me? Myself. It's a paradox. That's the point. The pen was literally a creation of the paradox. It exists because the paradox exists. So all of this that happened in time crimes exists because the paradox exists, okay? For example, it's the exact same thing with Hector. He saw the woman, okay? He saw the woman, which made him go into the forest. But he made the woman take off her clothes in the forest because he had seen her and went into the forest. So what came first? It's a paradox. There was no first Hector. All of this... Why couldn't, hypothetically, you be the very first time traveling? Like, you never saw yourself appear and make the pen, but in 20 years, you go back in time, and then you give yourself a pen. Because that's... You created that paradox. No, 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 because there's different types of time travel movies. We're talking about one specific movie which deals with a paradox. So, for, exa- okay. so for example... So, for example... Hypothetically, then the second you, which would be the... Okay. Anyway. Th- this movie deals, in and of itself, with a paradox. So in right. this movie universe, we're dealing exclusively in a paradox. This isn't one of those time travel movies where you go back and you basically change time, okay? Okay. Oh, and, it's and, not yeah. about time? Yeah, it's it's not about time. But it is about time. God damn it. But but yes, basically. <laughs> the movie basically doesn't have plot holes because he's just like... The movie has plot holes. He's just, he's just like Donnie Darko, where where he's talking to Donnie Darko is talking to the professor, and Donnie says, "What happens if you can see where you're supposed to walk in the future with that weird bubble that came out of his chest?" And he says, "And and you know, I see what I can do in the future." And the dude says, "You can't see what you can do in the future because if you could see what you were gonna do in the future, you could not do that and change the future. It's a paradox." And Donnie Darko says, "But what if I followed it?" And then the professor says, I don't want to talk about this anymore because this is very this is very free willy and philosophical and messed up. So it so, creepy gives me the heebie jeep who's talking about philosophy. So 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 basically so basically he he said that he didn't want to talk about it because it was very complicated and and it's that type of thing. If you know what's gonna happen. That line essentially equates to I don't want to get into it because it'll bore the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's one of those things where if you know what's going to happen in the future, I mean, I mean, you still have free will though, right? The the, kind of, the thing is, sense. the I I I I don't know. That's the question. If you mm-hmm. know, if you do exactly what you were supposed to do, you know, does Hector have free will? Because in the end, in the beginning, you think he does. 
But then in the end, he has that line where you hear all of the police officers in the background. He says, are you going back in time? And then Hector says, I have no choice. Because Hector 3, the third Hector, already talked to the guy with the walkie-talkie. So you know that it already happened. And the other Hector understands that. Hector 2 understands that. He says, yeah, I have no choice. You mean Hector 3? It doesn't become Hector 3. Technically, we're seeing Hector 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, we're seeing Hector 1, 2, and 3 not at the same time. We're living through the first Hector as he becomes the second, as he becomes the third. Right. So, so basically, Hector 2 is the one that says, hey, we already know that Hector 3 went through and that he talked to you earlier today on a walkie-talkie. That means that I, Hector 2, have no choice and I have to get into that machine because it already happened. Therefore, it's going to happen. So in the beginning, it's a lot more free willy. And then in the end, it's like, I don't know. Am I making these conscious decisions? Do I have free will? Is it determined? Is the future set in stone? Right. So it's, so it's, it's a great exercise in, in stuff like that. Though the part that I really enjoy is, is the first time that he's Hector 2 and he wraps his head in the bandages and he's chasing the, the Hector 1 who he stabbed and he's trying to find the tree. And he's kind of like looking around and he goes like, okay, that one. And he turns around, like flip, pops his collar and goes like, rah, with the binoculars. And then goes like, huh, nothing happened. And then kind of walks over and goes like, uh, that tree. And then kind of like turns around, flips his collar and goes, rah, and then does the binoculars again. And he does it like good five times. Yeah. It was, no, it was really funny and it broke up the action. So. Right. Yeah. They, they had a, they had a couple of great dark comedy bits in that movie. <laughs> Best part was the ending. Cause that was, came, that came out of nowhere. It's kind of like, you must do this. I, I I know I'm essentially, well, he murders her. Yeah. In, in a weird in a weird way because the future him sets him up to be killed by the past him. Yeah. Which is sort of murder if there's a, any anyway. Yeah. He, yeah. Oh my. He God. sends his girl to the death by his own hand, but it wasn't his hand. Yeah. I don't know. It's just the movie really impressed me in that regard. It was. Yeah. It was a really interesting take on the entire thing. And I love the fact that they had the three Hectors doing everything, at, you know. But it didn't get good until that third Hector when you were like, oh, this is going down. Until, until because the... at first you're kind of like, oh, this is the same movie I just saw, essentially. And I, it's kind of like. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I enjoyed seeing how everything fell into place, at least from. The... Like that part was interesting. And then as the soon, second like, but you figured it out, though. Like, you know that this girl's there and then, you know, she's going to capture her and you're like, OK, so that's going to happen. And right. Then... Yeah. 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 So. Okay. So at least a comparison that I saw in the beginning a lot was to rear window with his binoculars. The, the tension that the movie set up was really good. Yeah. And the film grain helped a lot. The movie was really grainy. It made it look like it came out of a Latin country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It made it, it made it look like it came out of a, of a Latin country, but it made it look like it was a Latin, uh, not a Latin movie. It made it look like it, made it, it looked like it came out of a, a decade before. Exactly. It made it look like an older, like eighties movies, especially with the music in the background. And I think it did a, 70s. I think it did a really, really good job. I'm looking old. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, ah, oh, I don't know. I was impressed by the movie. I really liked it. I really liked it. No, it was good. It was really good. Okay, what what other plot holes does the movie have? What what are you what are you thinking? The whole thing of free will. In fact, I mean, obviously, it's not going to show you that because it's not as fun or entertaining. Right. The fact that he didn't go downstairs to check her. I mean, that's the thing. That's always the thing with with these type of movies. Everything just feels a little too coincidental, and then it has the excuse of being like, "Oh, that's not what he does in the past, so it's not what he can do now." I'm like, "That's no, you, what?" Uh, which is essentially what you just argued with me. No, he has to do that because it's already platinum. I'm like, ugh. It's just a nice well, well, little I'm, director. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not saying that, that he has to do that. I'm just saying that it begs the question, what if he would have diverted from the path, you know? Right. But, but see, the problem is, the problem with that train of thought is that because we're in a paradox movie, okay? If he would not have made the girl leave and climb up into the ceiling, okay? Heck, this is Hector 3. If he would have not done that, right. that means Hector 2 would have had no motivation to go back up over there and right. travel back in time, making Hector 3 an impossibility. Right. So Hector 3 would have never been able to make the girl run, and because Hector 3 would have never done that, he would have also never hit Hector 2's car down, causing him to put on the bandage. You see, see, what, see where I'm, 
where I'm going with right. this? It's a paradox. That's why you cannot divert from what happens. This entire movie takes place in a paradox, and the paradox breaks. Literally, everything breaks when you try and divert yourself from the paradox. So what happens if that happens? Does everything just die? Does the universe ex implode? Well, I mean, I don't know what would happen in the movie, but theoretically, this type of time travel is not possible. Right, I know. But I'm saying, if you do break a paradox, what happens to the paradox? I would, I would say the universe implodes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the movie should have ended <laughs> just, <laughs> when just explosion <laughs> but but yeah i mean it, it leads to really interesting questions when he starts saying what if he would have diverted you know what if he would have right. changed something what if he wouldn't have done x or y it's really definitely an interesting an interesting movie and and it feels i don't know it feels really weird watching it and thinking that he really had no choice but he kind of did but he kind of didn't I don't know. I love these types of movies. It's very indie. That's tr it is. It is very indie. It's very low budget. Very indie. Oh, there is no budget. <laughs> but, but they did such a good, such a good job. Yeah, I agree. It, it was well done. Though they had no budget to do stuff, you know, to have lots of props and stuff like that. But they had enough budget for great locations. Their locations were great. Well, like, like the house and the lab and all that type of stuff. It was pretty cool. That could. They could have been people they knew. Well, I know that's why the for for locations, you know, location right. scouting and stuff like that, it was it was done really well. Breaking out the window was probably the most expensive thing <laughs> before the car crash. Yeah, yeah, the car crash probably. Yeah. <laughs> did when his wife, when he was like, "Oh no, it was my wife." What did you think? I was like, "Well, that sucks." That also doesn't make any sense. Why is she home? Why didn't she call out for him? But didn't you also? So I thought I thought something was up. Right. I'm like, yeah. Oh, that's. But I also thought, oh my god, he killed his wife. Now you have to go back in time and fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the car, the car was there already. Like when he was like, oh my god, and he looked at the car. I was like, wow, that's yeah. You're a genius. He wasn't the smartest person or had the best cardio. I also thought that was unrealistic because like in the first scene, he's trying to run up a hill and he's like almost having a heart attack. And then there's a scene where he's chasing after the girl and he's like full on sprinting for like five minutes. And but, I'm like, but Wait. have you? But but he always he always ends the up time travel panting. like infuse you with the usual bolt for a second he always ends up panting like he he tends to run a predetermined amount of time and then he just starts going like <gasps> which is yeah which is deep. out of shape yeah yeah i mean it's but i just thought it was weird like okay you think there's a murderer after you and you collapse in the middle of the road but now you can sprint up a mountain to catch this girl i don't know but i mean he okay up a hill he literally all he did was go up a hill like 10 feet and then take a right. I mean, he didn't really run that far. So maybe it was to give you the illusion that it was actually a really big hill. Right. From yeah. like, yeah, who knows? Anyway, anyway, all right, let's move on to Spaceballs, the movie. Okay, wait. Before Here's Spaceballs, the review. Before we do that, before we do oh, that. Fine. Okay. Yeah. It, this is one of those movies, just like stuff like Independence Day, where <sighs> the movie comes to a close, but then you start thinking about what happens afterwards and you're like, that's going to suck. Because, for example, in Independence Day, all of the all of the alien spaceships got knocked down and crashed or whatever. But each of those ships has millions of extraterrestrials, which I am assuring you that they didn't all die. So now they're all going to swarm out of the ships and into humanity's areas. They all have these crazy exoskeletons, and they will kill everyone. I mean, the war isn't over. It's not like the you know the movie. Why they making a sequel? Ah, oh, that's gross. But yeah, that's that's just my point. And in this movie. The movie ends with everything coming full circle and him, first, and, and him holding the, the wife's hand. But how the hell are they going to play off the dead girl? <laughs> well, she fell off the roof. It's a total stranger. Like, the wife's never seen her before. Essentially, they just say they knew somebody broke into the house and was chasing them. So, I don't know. You just say this girl, we don't know who she was. She appeared. She fell off the roof and this bandit person was there the only problem is that there might be dna on her of him but at the same time it's, yeah what's a rough anyway <laughs> okay. baseball okay okay so yeah definitely watch los corona crimenes or time crimes it is a wonderful movie and now and we... email us if you really want to see it the first three people will will buy them a rental exactly yes so Anyway, now I feel you bad to be like, this is a great movie. You should watch it. Too bad you can. So now we can talk about Spaceballs and American Psycho if you so desire.
Well, Spaceballs is great. You should watch it. And American Psycho is also great. And you should watch it. Have you seen American Psycho? Yeah, I have. Man, that ending. <laughs> I just love that part when he goes like, I really like this song. And he's just like kind of like tapping. And then he goes like, ha ha. And he just smacks him. Oh, God. Yeah, but he didn't actually smack him. That movie. That movie, dude. Or did he? That movie. Yeah, it was, it was good. I have to return some videotapes. Yeah. Oh. So what, what was up with his weird fascination with kind of pop music? Like, he has a weird obsession with pop music. I, that's just that's just him. That's just him. Like, a weird, weird obsession with pop music. I, yeah. Is it supposed to say that, like, it all kind of sounds the same, but it's kind of weird that you can actually pull out these weird distinctions about it and find depth within even something that's so... So ordinary, but yet there's still profoundness found within it. And that's precisely what he was. He was ordinary, yet there's profoundness found within it. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Could you also say that his videotape, like his blockbuster overdue money that he owes is crazy high because he always has to return videotapes yeah, and then never returns any? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, both good movies. Go watch them. They're on Netflix now. So, so go watch those movies. Good times. And now we're moving Let's on. Move on the news, dude. No, to new on DVD and Blu-ray and All theaters. Right. New on DVD yeah. and Blu-ray. We have Lee Daniels as the Butler. Enough said. Riddick. Right. Car <laughs> Carrie. Wait, that wasn't one movie. Lee Daniels, the Butler. <laughs> dot dot dot. Enough said. What? Wow. The spectacular now and your next. Did you see your next? By the way, that yes, one I horror did. movie I was. It. Was it good? I fully enjoyed it. It was by the same director who directed um, something on VHS. He directed he directed the right. overarching story of the kids like robbing. Yeah, and then he also did a story in VHS too. And, and po point is, um, yeah, I liked it a lot. Tons of shaky cam, like a lot of shaky cam. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Like a lot of shaky. There's one scene where you can't see anything because it's shaking so much, <laughs> and it's great. I loved it. Wow. So, all right, all right. I love shaky cam. I, I know you do. Oh, I know you do. And this movie proves that you can have it can add dramatic effect and it gives an illusion of chaos. All right, all right, fine, fine. Anyway, fine. All right. It was, it was, it's a good movie, and the twists are interesting, and it's again another low budget horror movie. Anyway, okay. Okay, so new to theaters, we have Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. Uh, rest <laughs> in peace, Tom Clancy. <laughs> right along, Devil. That's not funny. He's actually dead. I know, I know. Devils do the nut job like father, Whoa. like son. GBF, Whoa. big bad wolves, and summer in February. Uh, so anyway, moving on to news. First on the list is the fact news. that, which is great because it has to do with a movie we just talked about, and it's that they are rewriting Time Crimes because DreamWorks bought the rights, so they're going to make a crappy remake. Or a better remake? No. No. They're going to make a crappy remake. Let's get real here. Come on. Come on. Come Why? On. I won't have to read subtitles. That's Come on. Plus. I, d I didn't have to read subtitles. I don't know what you're talking about. I read some subtitles. I mean, the language is pretty... I think that's cool, though. Especially for that director. Yeah. Well, I very much doubt that he's going to direct no, it. But, I mean, he still has probably a piece in it. Yeah, well, eh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, I doubt that he'll be casted again as the as the guy. Anyway. Next bit of news is that Jonah Hill says that 22 Jump Street is going to be very self-aware, self and it's going to be basically making fun of itself because they're making a sequel. So, Which was the first one. What? The first one was also pretty self-aware. Oh, yeah. Because they were making it. Yeah. But I, I, the only reason you're reading that is to reiterate that you're in that stupid. Movie. No, 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 no. Be, because, you know, they said it in the trailer. They were like, it looks like you guys are getting a sequel. And I was like, oh, oh, it's almost like in Battlestar Galactica, how the actual giant ship is called Battlestar Galactica. And they say it every single episode. So it's almost like saying the name in in the in the series. You know, it's going to be a good movie. Same thing. So it, It's from the people that did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Which was also super self-aware. Yeah, right, right. All right, what was what was your bit of news? Groundhog's Day may be heading to Broadway, which is cool because I love that movie. Yeah. Um, Despicable Me three is coming in a couple of years. Not just the, not just the made. Minions movie. No, so both of those are coming out. Right. They're remaking The Grinch Stole Christmas. Really? Hmm. Yep. 
uh, the Conjuring spinoff Annabelle uh, starts filming yesterday. Why right, that looks? I think that could be interesting. Also, wait, no, say what you're gonna say. No, I'm gonna talk about the Oscars. You go. Oh no, no, let's talk about the Razzies first. Oh, <laughs> yes. The nominees are for the 34th annual Razzies Award. Worst Picture nominations are After Earth, Grown Ups 2, The Lone Ranger, A Medea Christmas, and Movie 43. All right. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I think I think Grown Ups 2 has literally in almost every single category. Nice. Worst remake, ripoff, or sequel is Grown Ups 2, Hangover 3, The Lone Ranger, Scary Movie 5, and Smurfs 2. You have the worst screenplay, which was After Earth, Grown Ups 2, The Lone Ranger. Okay, pretty much the same thing as Picture. Worst actress, you have Halle Berry in The Call, Selena Gomez in Get On Away, yes. Lindsay Lohan in The Canyons, which I... Really? Tyler Perry in A Medea Christmas, Naomi Watts in Diana and Movie 43. You have the worst actor, I'm going to guess Johnny Depp in The Lone Ranger, Ashton Kutcher in Jobs, Adam Sandler, Grown Ups 2, James Smith in After Earth, and Sylvester Stallone, Bullet to the Head, Escape Plan, and Grudge Match. Wow. Uh, Wow. We're supporting actors. I'm so glad. Lady Gaga and Machete Kills, uh, yes. Salma Hayek in Grown Ups 2, Katherine Heigl in The Big Wedding, Kim Kardashian in Tyler Perry's Temptation, Lindsay Lohan in Inappropriate Comedy and Supporting and Scary Movie 5. Yeah. We're supporting actor. You have Chris Brown, Battle of the Year, Larry the Cable Guy in A Medea Christmas. Oh. oh. Taylor Lautner in Grown Ups 2, Will Smith in After Earth, and Nick Swartzen in Grown Ups 2 in a Haunted House. He was in both of those? Oh, Gross. Nick Swartzen. Worst screen combo. The entire cast of Grown Ups 2. The entire cast of 43. Lindsay Lohan and Charlie Sheen in Scary Movie 5. Tyler Perry and either Layer the Cable Guy or the worn out wig and dress of Medea Christmas. <laughs> Jane Smith and Will Smith on planet Nepotism in After <laughs> <laughs> Worst director, finally, is the 13 people who directed Movie 43, Dennis Dugan, Grown Ups 2, Tyler Perry, M. Night Shyamalan, and Gore Verbinski for The Lone Ranger. Verbinski, yeah. So yeah, those are the Razzies. So let's go to the real stuff. Okay, so the Oscars. The Oscar nominations are up, and with them, we have the nominees for Best Picture, which, obviously are American Hustle, Captain Phillips, 12 Years a Slave, Wolf of Wall Street, Gravity, Dallas Buyers Club, Nebraska, and Philomena. And uh, the, her. The only, and her as well. The only movies that I have not watched from there are Nebraska, Philomena, and her. And her we will be watching as freaking soon as it comes out. Yeah. Because it is awesome. And Nebraska and Philomena, I'm trying to see if I can see them in theaters because they, they have not come out here yet. Yeah, we are just naming them because... Hey, our lists matched up pretty damn well with the Oscars. Yeah, just saying. yeah we are we are just naming them right now because after... I mean, I added The Conjuring and the other thing, but that's... I know they're not the best pictures, but I think I enjoyed them the most. But yes, anyway, we will be having an Oscars episode, and we will be trying to watch as many Oscar movies as possible, so we will hopefully keep up to date. And it's cool because we've actually watched almost all of the movies that are nominated. This is great. Okay, so go on. The movies nominated for directing, directing. are oh, okay. David O. Russell, American Hustle. Oh, oh, of course. Alfonso Cuaron. Kiran? Cuaron. Whatever. Gravity. <laughs> Alexander Payne, Nebraska. Steve McQueen, 12 Years a Slave. Martin Scorsese, The Wolf of Wall Street. All right. Clapped after every one of those. All right. So yeah, we've seen all of those except for Nebraska. I think we are going to talk about the Oscar we nominations. Episode, we, we yeah, yeah. Have... We will have a pre episode for the Oscars and a post episode for the Oscars. So we will be talking we should, about. Oscars. We should have our podcast during the Oscars, and then we record our reactions during like the, an entire podcast during the Oscars. We have a special podcast that's really long. Yeah, and then we and then we edit it out obviously during the commercials and garbage. Okay, so we will not be saying who we think is going to win or anything. We will be having specific yeah. shows on March 2nd, before and after, and we're maybe going to do during. So help us all out. We're going to try and figure it out, and we will like talk more cool. about it as soon as it actually happens. Though, right. also, we have the people for what actor in a leading role, which is Christian Bale in American Hustle, Bruce Dern in Nebraska, Leonardo DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street, Chitwell Edufour in 12 Years a Slave, and Matthew McConaughey yeah. in Dallas Buyers Club. 
we also have uh, the freaking actress. You can't be Chiwetel. Like, you can't be. I... Actress in a leading role, which is Amy Adams in American Hustle, Judy Dench in Philomena, Kate Blanchett in Blue Jasmine, Meryl Streep in August o- Osage Co- County, and Sandra. Osage. Yeah, yeah. And Sandra Bullock in Gravity. Then... Supporting role for actor in a supporting role, you have Barkid Abdi for Captain Phillips, Bradley Cooper, American Hustle, Michael Fassbender, 12 Years a Slave. Ooh. Hey, hey, Ooh. look at you. Yeah. Jonah Hill, The Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, you could call Jared it. You Lido. called that one. You called that one. I did. Yes, I did call that one. Yeah, we we made it. We made a bunch of good a bunch of good calls, but honestly, yeah, it, we they did. were they were freaking obvious. So I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's it's not really, it doesn't really say much about us because it was really obvious calls. But <laughs> but right. still still let's let's go ahead and take it in. We made some good calls on the movies that we said were were great. But yeah, actress in a supporting role: Sally Hawkins, Blue Jasmine, Jennifer Lawrence, and American Hustle called it. Uh, Lupita Nyong, O. Ooh, good 12 call. Years a Slave. Oh. Uh, Julia Roberts, August Osage Company, country, county, county. good job, company. <laughs> <laughs> June Squibb in Nebraska, best animated feature film. We have The Crudes, Despicable Me Too, Ernest and Celestine, Frozen, and The Wind Rises. I have not seen Ernest and Celestine and The Wind or Rises. Or The Wind Rises, yeah. Who's I, surprised that The Crudes? I am. I'm surprised that The Crudes got nominated, but then again, there it was, weren't it any. Was quite. There it was beautiful. It really, really was beautiful. Good movies that were animated that came. Why didn't Despicable? Okay, Despicable Me Two is there. <sighs> I almost had a heart attack. I, I... Why isn't? Okay. Why isn't the Lion King there? <laughs> but yes, okay. yeah, those, those were very obvious calls, except for the Croods. Except for the Croods. And then you obviously have. I, it was a beautiful. It was a beautiful movie. Despite despite its flaws, it was well acted and it was beautiful. There's reason. I, I there's definitely reasons to justify it. Right. Despite it being kind of a shit film. <laughs> like, it was a good shit film. Like, the movie, there's parts of it I've never felt embarrassed for a movie before until The Croods. Like, it, that's how painfully bad it was at, at a couple points. But at some other points, I'm like, this is one of the best animated films in a while. This is delightfully surprising. All right. So I, I, I can see justification for it. At the same time, I'm just surprised. Yeah. I couldn't find anything yeah. else. And anyway, I mean, apart from all those things, we also have cinematography, which they nominated the Grandmaster Gravity inside Lewin Davis, Nebraska Prisoners. And something that I'm really interested in is the documentary feature, which is yeah, the the, uh, the act of killing Cutie and the Boxer, Dirty Wars, The Square, and 20 Feet from Start. And the, the one that I think is probably going to win, I don't, I'm not going to say it. We'll We'll talk about that later. But yeah. yes, they have. I, I've seen zero of those. They movies. they have they have some great nominations, and I think this is going to be a pretty great Oscars. I'm surprised the Grandmaster under cinematography. Really? That's what I'm surprised about. The Grandmaster. I, I, I wanted to see that one. Yeah, it looked beautiful. Hey, hey! Guess what, Cog Games? Anyway, guess what, Cog Games? What? You called it. Let it go. Got nominated for best. I told you. Oh, yep. Well, I mean, it was again obvious, yeah. but still. Anyway, we will be talking. Oh, by the way, they had a Frozen thing at Disney, and it was freaking sweet. Really? Was it, I totally forgot that. Was it like on? I could talk about it next time. Was it I'll on ice? It. No, essentially, what they have now is a 3D projector on the castle, wow. so they can make the castle do crazy things. Like at one point, it was gingerbread, and they showed parts of it like expanding. So it looks, it was 3D projection, but it made it look like the castle was actually expanding, right. and then like would like spin really fast, and then turn into something else, and then all of a sudden, like snow started falling, and then let it go came uh, on. And Let It Go came on, and then you saw the princess come on the side of it, like, start singing. It was, like, from the movie. And then she was casting her spells. Yeah. And it was turning to ice, yeah. like the ice castle. It was... <laughs> it was amazing! <laughs> nice. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. I think with that, we are done, right? I'm surprised uh, Hobbit didn't get nominated for costume design. It got nominated for visual effects. For visual effects. Wh- yeah. Which is sad, because the costume design for The Hobbit was fantastic. Amazing, but yeah, and, and the ma- the, ma- the makeup. Out. It's been like makeup every and single year. One of those. But I mean, yeah. it's it's it doesn't matter if it's gotten if the Lord of the Rings stuff has gotten nominated every year. It's yeah. impressive. It's impressive what they do with it. Jackass got nominated for makeup. Yeah. Please have Jackass presents Bad Grandpa win an Oscar. Please, it's gonna be Dallas Buyers Club or the Lone Ranger. But please let Jackass win. I just want to see like George Clooney or something be up there and be like the winner for makeup and hairstyling. Jack Jackass presents Bad Grandpa. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, 
I think with that, we are done. So thank you all for tuning in. Please, we have a new Facebook page. So everything that you want to know about everything that we're doing. And if you want to keep up to date with the movies we're watching so you can watch them with us. And you also want to comment on what's going on and all of that. We have a Facebook page. Go to Facebook and find Post Grad Entertainment. It is Facebook.com slash Post Grad ENT. You can find us right there, like our page, and we have everything on there. We will also be announcing all of the movies that we are going to watch. You can also give us suggestions on there. We would love to hear from you. We are a community that wants to interact with the people that hear our stuff and watch our videos. Also, get hundreds of listens every week, and yet none of you say hi. Exa- and I'm starting to feel a little Yeah, a little we, we want to we love you guys back for all the love that you the sent to us. The cold love of cool guy <laughs> just not enough to fulfill my needs. <laughs> <laughs> so yes you can do that or you can follow us on twitter you can follow the cognitive gamer at cognitive gamer he doesn't There's use no twitter a lot but you can also follow I me said like one tweet a day you can also That's follow me at the right pad right as in w-r-i-t-e and i am pretty decently active on twitter so you can hang out with me over there you can also check us out on post grad games Type that into YouTube and you will find all of our stuff over there. Or email us at postgradentertainment at gmail.com with comments, suggestions, clips, movie news, whatever the heck you want to send us. Anything, anything and everything. We love it. So with that, I think we are done. Thank you all very much for tuning in and we will see you next week.